Well, hello and welcome back to our final workout. I'm Rami Romani and we are here on the streets of Cairo, Egypt, my home. By the end of this workout, I would have taken you through the whole Egyptian history up till today. But first, we have to start with the most dangerous thing you could do in Cairo, cross the street. Let's go. We are here um, on an island in the middle of Cairo and it's called Zemalek. And it's an island in the Nile in the middle of Cairo. Most embassies are here. It's an up-class neighborhood and um, people love being here. The Oprah House is here. It's a lovely place. We're about to take a bridge that takes us to the eastern side of Cairo, which is where the center of the town is. But first, we're gonna have to cross the street and crossing the street in Cairo is not an easy task and it's a little bit counterintuitive. You gotta listen or else we're all dead. First of all, do not look where you're going, look to where you're gonna get killed from. So keep coming, join me, eye contact with the cars, thank people, thank the cars right before they kill you and keep going to your next destination. Sometimes traffic lights work that's my lucky day, but most days traffic lights are suggestions on the streets of Cairo. Uh, lanes are decorations and not more on the streets of Cairo. There is a way for everything. People weave through and get their way to make it happen. There are tons and tons of cars. Cairo is one of the most densely populated cities in the whole world. The third most dense. There's more than 20 million people living in this city, Cairo. And it's a small, small city in comparison. Crossing the street one more time. This is an easy one. You gotta hold your breath when you cross the streets of Cairo. There we go. We're safe and sound to the other side. So, sometimes you wonder what happened in Egypt? Thousands and thousands of years of history. How did we go from there to here today? This is, by the way, one of the main bridges, the first bridge ever to cross the Nile in Egypt. It was built back in the 1920s. Um, and that's exactly the time where Egypt finally took its final independence. Uh, from the British invasion. But you gotta wonder, thousands and thousands of years of history and then we arrive here. What happened? What did Cairo and Egypt go through? Well, it's simple. 5,000 years ago, we had ancient Egypt, the strongest and most and longest lasting civilization in the world. Ancient Egypt, that went through its phases, the old kingdom where the pyramids are, the middle kingdom, not much you could see there because it wasn't as strong of a kingdom. And then the new kingdom where King Tut lived and Ramesses, the Luxor temple and the Karnak temple. And then the end of the new kingdom where ancient Egyptian regimes started falling apart and then the Persians came in. Persians took over and it was a brief moment where Egypt was in a turmoil. Everything is all over the place. But when the Persians took over, they called themselves ancient Egyptian kings and queens. And then the Persians went away and then the time came for one of the most famous kings of Egypt, Alexander the Great. I'll tell you that again without the horn. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great came about 300 BC, which is 2300-ish years ago. And then Alexander the Great started a new era for Egypt. It was the Greek Roman era. It went through Alexander and all his successors, all the Ptolemides, Ptolemaic kings and queens, to end with the most famous Ptolemaid queen, Ptolemy the ninth queen, Cleopatra. And then Queen Cleopatra, of course, was the end of the Greek rulers. 
and then the Romans came in. The Romans took their time 500 years and transformed Cairo from the prehistoric era into the AD time, all the way to about 400 AD. Then, 400 AD came, people in Egypt were not happy with the Romans. The Romans were too, too much of a dictatorship and they didn't treat Egyptians too well. By that time, Egyptians' religion was Christianity. Jesus and the Romans changed that from ancient Egyptian religions to Christianity. And then the Arab conquest started. And three different Islamic eras approached Egypt and took over. We had the Fatimid era, the Mamluks, and the Ottoman period. That took Egypt all the way. These are the uh, Cairo runners. They're very excited about running on the Nile. Too excited, I would say. And then the, the, the Islamic era took Egypt all the way to the French invasion by Napoleon during the 1800s and the, um, the early 1800s and then the British invasion by uh, uh, took took Egypt through a hundred years all the way to 1922. 1922 was the date that Egypt finally claimed its independence again and had the first Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser. Nasser was the most charismatic president Egypt had ever had and he was the leader of not just Egypt, the whole Arab world. Everyone loved Nasser and then Nasser died of a heart attack and Sadat came, the second president of Egypt. Sadat took Egypt through its most famous war of 1976 which Egypt nearly won against Israel. At the time Israel had invaded some of Egypt. Egypt made a peace treaty afterwards, took their land back and then Mubarak the president came and took Egypt all the way to nine years ago, January 25th, 2011. A revolution happened which changed Egypt's history and future, changed my personal history and future. And, uh, and Egypt went through political instability since then. And now we're here today. I probably can't talk much about the political situation in Egypt today, but I can tell you what happened to my family during the revolution. January 25th, 2011. One day before that was a normal day like any other. I had been living in Egypt with my beautiful wife who I met on location filming. And um, we've been li she's, she is from the US. She's an American. She lived here with me in Egypt and she loved it just as much as I did, as I do. And uh, we had our baby. She was six months old. And um, Egypt was great. I loved it here. I swore I would have lived in Egypt for the rest of my life. And that was our plan. My wife had left her country and moved her life to come be with me in Egypt. Two years into our marriage, two years into living very happily in Egypt, the revolution happens. And it was the day that everything changed direction, course in my story. Um, to the day like today, everything is great, everything was fine, no problems whatsoever. And everyone knows that the next day there will be some protests on the streets. Students are coming out to talk of their own police brutality experience. And it was fair, police was a little bit brutal. 
keeping Egypt safe. Everyone has his reasons, his excuses. We don't need to get into that. But those kids, those students went out on the street and they were very passionate. They had a beautiful, beautiful day of revolution on that day. They wanted their rights and it felt great. Everyone was happy. I looked at it, was watching it on TV. This is a crossing the street moment again and we've survived, we live another life. Um, I was watching this TV and everything looks fine. It was a normal protest like any other. But then this one took a turn. More people went out on the street. And I can't I can't tell you a motivation or who wanted what or who was with who. It's really complex. But it took a turn and people became aggress aggressive against, uh, against the police and the police had to disappear. I mean, their, their policemen were getting hit and the people were getting hurt. Everyone was getting hurt. The police decided to disappear and then Egypt became lawless at that point. Um, it was a tough time through Egypt's history. Now, of course, today, the country is completely secure, stable, and everyone is happy. Um, anyway, my wife and I decide that it wasn't safe for us anymore. It wasn't safe for our six-month-old baby. And we decided to leave. The American Embassy called my wife on the phone at the time and um, she, uh, they told her that there's a plane coming to take her out. I was an American citizen at the time so she decided not to, not to take that plane. We found our way out. Long story short, we left Egypt which in my mind was a temporary situation. I thought we we're gonna be away for a week or so, come back. Because at the end of the day, our empire was here. We built a great thing. We built a great life. Everything was great. My future was settled. I knew what was happening for the rest of my life. Um, we went to New York, Syracuse, where my father-in-law is. Stayed for a week or so. And the news wasn't looking too good. The government collapsed at the time. And we decided for the safety of our child and for our future, we should start a new life. And we did. Since then, that was nearly nine years ago, Two kids later, I have three, chil three children now. My beautiful wife, still, st <laughs> still struggling. <laughs> and uh, we have a great life. I love my life in Los Angeles, California now. I come back to Egypt every year and I make a point of it. This is my country. Egypt is not completely the same, but everything changes into specific directions. I think the country is in a much better place and um, I think it's heading in the right direction or at least I have to say so. Let's not get talk too much politics at this point. This is Tahrir Square. This is where it all took place. This became the symbol of the revolution and people would come back sometimes every year on January 25th to celebrate that, that day. Back to 1922, when Egypt first took its independence, when Cairo was created, when Cairo became the capital of Egypt, all this was built during that time. Cairo was built, had lovely colonial buildings. It was a beautiful, beautiful city. At that time, there were uh, awards for the most beautiful cities in the world. And Cairo won that award two times in a row. 
for being the most beautiful city in the world. Kings and queens from all over the world would come to Cairo, Egypt to spend their most romantic time here. Cairo is known to be that romantic city. But also that time, 1922, was around the time where King Tut's tomb was discovered. And that was a great push into Egypt. Egypt is all over the news. Egypt is all over the media. The discovery of King Tut made everything change here. Tourists were coming from all over the world. There was a, there was a Tatumania, Egyptumania. People were buying Egypt stuff, movies about Egypt, all because of that King Tut tomb. And that was a great cause. And that was a great cause and a great reasoning behind building one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Now today, Cairo, in that square in downtown, has some of the most interesting architecture. We're going to cross over one more time, stare to where the cars are coming, thank them before they kill you. And you're on the other side of the street, safe again. But yes, the, the discovery of King Tut's tomb was the great push in building this city and making it one of the most beautiful cities in the world. As a matter of fact, the most beautiful city of the world, twice. Today's Cairo has that mix between colonial beautiful Cairo and, um, and a 70s modern era Cairo. If you look at those buildings right there, it tells the whole story. A beautiful colonial building with high ceilings and beautiful work, handwork, and every detail of it is just beautiful. The building is old, disheveled, and then on the bottom store, all the modern gloss, cheesy stores that sell clothes and and rebuilt into some no sense of fashion or beauty to the art of the building but look at that building all it takes is probably one clean up and take care of all the cables hanging from it and it's still the most beautiful building in the world the detail in there is marvelous One of the most important rulers that came to Egypt and ruled Egypt during the Ottoman era was King Muhammad Ali, most often confused with Muhammad Ali the boxer, but not the same person. King Muhammad Ali was one of the Ottoman rulers that were sent to Egypt to rule Egypt under the Ottoman Empire. He was an Albanian illiterate, didn't know how to read and write, but he decided to make Egypt, crossing the street once again, only focus on the people that are about to kill you. Thank them in advance. Muhammad Ali decided to take Egypt into a different place. He knew how valuable this country was and decided that Egypt wasn't to be placed under the Ottoman Empire. Egypt is stronger than that. He grew the military of Egypt. He was one of the strongest rulers Egypt has ever had. He grew the military of Egypt. He grew the army and it became the strongest army. All the Ottoman Empire that was ruled from today's Turkey had. Egypt was that strong nation that the whole empire used to send Egypt's troops to go invade more land. Muhammad Ali became the ruler of the country with the strongest army, Egypt, and it became the strongest weapon for the whole Ottoman Empire. But it became too strong. And Muhammad Ali then asked for his independence with Egypt from the Ottoman Empire. And that was the beginning of a hundred year quest into the independence of Egypt. The Ottoman Empire decided, of course, not to give Egypt the independence. They finally settled 
to giving Muhammad Ali and his successors a higher title and make them all rule Egypt. Muhammad Ali then and his successors took Egypt through the French invasion. There's a lot of traffic footwork for traffic in Cairo. To, through the French invasion which lasted three years and the British invasion. And the lost Muhammad Ali successor was King Farouk who then was kicked out of Egypt and replaced by the first president of Egypt, Nasser. But that time, the three year of the French invasion versus the hundred years, nearly hundred years of the British invasion, the influence was completely different. When the French first came to Egypt, that was the first time that Egypt was recognized with its ancient Egyptian ruins and, and, and all these amazing structures that was there as treasure and not just as gold to be melted or old buildings to be taken down. The French were the ones that realized Egypt's treasure at the time. And that's when everything in Egypt changed and all the world's eyes turned towards Egypt and its massive empire and its massive ancient Egyptian treasure. The French were the reason why ancient Egypt today is where it is today. The French were the reason why King Tut's tomb was eventually found, even though it wasn't found by the French. But also during that French invasion, something very important happened. The discovery of the Rosetta Stone, the key to answering all hieroglyphic ancient Egyptian language and mystery solved because of that stone. And it was and it was one of the French, it was one of the French scientists and army generals. His name was Champollion, who found this amazing stone that had ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, ancient Greek, come to this side, be safe, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, ancient Greek, It's all in the thinking and the eye. You stare them in the eye and they will never kill you. They've seen you. You've seen them, that's it. Ancient Egyptian language and ancient Greek. And together, that mix created together that mix created what we know today about ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. They took the language, they took the names of the kings and the queens from the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, Ramesses, and saw it in the ancient Greek and it's pronounced Ramesses and by that they were able to combine both together and solve the mystery of ancient Egypt. Be safe. If you look around me, this is Egypt today. We're here. This is one of the main squares in Cairo. And um, a lot of these old squares is a roundabout. So many different streets coming out of it. So many different street crossings that you have to do. Come with me, come with me. Just trust me. Have trust in me. You say. But all the squares looked like that. Like a beautiful slice of cake in the middle of Cairo. Look at all these buildings up here. Look at that. It's like a big circle with beautiful buildings. You know what? I should take you to the center of that square to show you the circle and give you a full run.
There is also a language in the uh, in the horns. People use horns with a language. This is it. This is the center of the square. The name is Talat Harp, that statue. He invented the Egyptian economy, the modern economy as we know it today. And here's what I want you to do with me. You're gonna look around, watch your footsteps, look around and see all modern Cairo as it is today. This is it. This is where we live now. The happy Cairo place. Well, this is it. You did a great job. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you so much for joining me. Together we went through 5,000 years of history. We started with the pyramids of Egypt. And then we went to Luxor, to the New Kingdom. And went to the tomb of King Tut. All the way to here, today, the Cairo we live in. Thank you for watching this and thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this country, enjoyed me as your iFit guide, you should go watch the rest of the world. It's a great way of getting in shape. Thank you so much again. I'm Rami Romani. I was your iFit guide.